All right, as you might have noticed, I've been getting into more categories of tech, namely laptops. As a creator and a gamer, it's hard not to get excited over the very tool that makes my work possible. And I've said this a couple of times before, but I have always approached laptops from like a value standpoint. As much as I wanted to try out the best specs, I could never really stomach just getting a laptop that was over $2,000. I found quite a bit of joy in learning how to optimize my workflow so that I could get my work done on an affordable notebook. Well, lately my eyes have been opened to some truly powerful computers and laptops, and I gotta say, I've really been missing out, and even if we are having this weird time when travel is low, laptops like this are still an important piece of my workflow when I'm going from home office to, well, my office office. And that's exactly what I've been doing on this, the main gear, Element 3. Shouts out to the company for being one of the first to reach out and send me their laptop to try out. And the reason why I haven't been able to get this video out until now is because of the classic dilemma. It's hard to review something that helps me, well, review things. But we do have a tiny little lull uh, after last week's big smartphone announcements, so let me tell you why I really adore this laptop that began as the brainchild of Intel themselves. Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? This is the main gear, Element Stage 3. Now, I know what you might be thinking. With all of the steps and leaps forward that we're seeing in computing, why go in on a laptop that is almost a year old? Well, being honest here, I'm new to the laptop game, and I thought that it would be good for me to check out something from the past to better understand where we are in the present. And you know what? A 9th gen Intel processor and the NVIDIA RTX 2070 Max-Q makes this still a great choice if you're just looking for a straight up gaming laptop with some interesting choices and style added in. What actually struck me about this laptop was its origins. This is an Intel white label design. That means that Intel basically created the blueprint for this construction, sent it out and said, hey, have at it. A few companies picked it up last fall, including Main Gear, which of course is the logo here. So you might have seen a couple of doppelgangers aside from just this one. And even if it is a simple design, this dark colorway has some fun bits and pieces throughout. On the front, which is to say the area uh, below the lid opening, there is an LED bar that gives it a nice bit of flare. Settings can allow this to stay on as long as the laptop is plugged in. And the body is made of this awesome magnesium alloy, making it a pretty light 15 inch laptop. I personally love the feel of this alloy, which has a texture to it that I really prefer over something like glossy or slippery. Now, as a 15 inch laptop, it's actually a bit beefier than some other laptops that I've used, which prioritize sleek minimalism. But then again, there's quite a bit of power in this body, not to mention a cooling system tailor made by Intel that manages to keep this laptop cooler than most under heavy load. Now I mentioned the beefiness, namely because I've been trying to lug it around in a couple of different ways. The laptop can fit in my typical backpack, the Peak Design Everyday Zip, but I also got it inside of this, the Moft laptop sleeve. And I gotta tell you, it's a great way to do it. The 15 inch variety can just barely fit the laptop and still be able to close, but it would be overkill to use the extra pocket at the same time. Now, I love the MOF sleeve though, because it looks good, is functional as a carrying solution, but the back portion literally folds up for it to become a laptop stand. Any little bit that gets the screen up to your eye line is important because it just helps with your overall posture and comfort. Now, it can lift to a couple of angles and it actually works pretty well as a lap desk too. They're not sponsoring this video, but MOF did send me the 15 inch variety and also a 14 inch variety that I'll talk about in my next laptop video, hint hint. Check the link in the description below for the MOF sleeve, which is in its final hours of its crowdfunding campaign. Now I'm previewing it a little bit here, but the IO does have pretty much everything you would expect, including a full SD card slot right next to the two USB-A ports. And then you get an extra USB-A port on the left next to the audio jacks. And then you get a USB-C Thunderbolt port on the back accompanied by the barrel charging port, HDMI, and ethernet connections. Normally I'm not a big fan of having ports on the back because reaching back there can be a bit of a chore, uh, but for those looking to use this as a docked battle station, which is exactly what I do here, putting the main cords on the back and out of the way actually makes a lot of sense. Now while a gaming forward laptop might not be particularly ideal for creators, I have to say that full size SD card slot came in pretty handy and it had plenty of read and write speed. And as far as upgradables are concerned, I actually had no reason to take off the bottom panel because it already came with all the right fixings. 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and a two terabyte MVNE drive in particular. 
And for the battery, I admit that I had this laptop plugged in pretty much all the time because that's how you get the most out of the GPU performance. But when typing up scripts and watching YouTube in the background, I got an average of like four hours, which isn't great, but I kind of expected for things like a gaming laptop. Speaking of YouTube, the speakers are on the bottom of the unit and they sound decent. They could honestly use quite a bit of more volume. And the touchpad is made of glass, nice and sizable, and has a handy little double tap feature in the corner for disabling it but we'll get to the keyboard later. So let me talk about the main specs. Yes, we are in the new generations of the CPU and the GPU, but if you follow notebook reviews and benchmarks, you probably know that the uptick in performance with the 10th gen Intel processor is good, but fairly incremental. You're still in good hands with laptops like this. And if you're looking to hold on to a little bit of your money, 2019 powerhouses are still powerhouses. I've been playing quite a bit of Jedi Fallen Order and Control on here without any issues, maintaining the high frame rates at 1080p. This is a 1080p resolution screen after all, and it's a good standard IPS display at 144 hertz refresh rate. High refresh rate is obviously becoming more and more prevalent these days, and if you're able to take advantage of it, it just makes gaming that much more fun. So plug this thing in and start playing straight away on the laptop or connect it via HDMI connection to a good monitor. But in either case, I had an amazing time. The laptop does get hot like any powerful configuration can. It's actually a little bit warm right now. Uh, but the fans pump the heat out of the large vents well enough to keep the temperatures from getting too crazy. I've played some games on like half a dozen laptops by now and this one is definitely the cool cat. And to quickly change between performance modes, a dedicated button in the corner near the power button is actually quite appreciated. Okay, so the gamer in me is super happy, but let's put the creator hat on and see how the main gear deals with the other half of my work-life balance. And like any good video, like this one, it starts with a script, like you're hearing right now. So the Element 3 comes with a mechanical keyboard. Yeah, you heard that right. A mechanical keyboard on a laptop. This is probably not what you're expecting though. There are some reviewers out there who looked at different takes of this uh, white label design, and they very astutely pointed out that this keyboard is one big piece. It's not a bunch of chiclets with a little bit of separation between each key. Because of that, the typing experience is a little different. For me, it's actually quite satisfying. There's a sound to this keyboard that I just can't get over. It does give this laptop yet another point in the unique and cool column, but because it's basically a flat plane and the actuation is much more tactile, I find myself not being able to type as fast as usual. Don't get me wrong, fast typing is certainly possible, but I think the way to put it is you have to be more intentional about your taps than usual. The backlighting includes RGB options in the main gear node application, which itself is a little bit anemic in terms of options, uh, but as far as the keyboard is concerned, you do have a bunch of ways to light it. I went with the raindrop rainbow setting, but there are solid color options as well as waves. I think my only gripe with the keyboard is that the lighting is per key. So if you want to have like really smooth animations, like a smooth wave, it has to be done at a higher speed to make it actually look that way. Ultimately, I love this keyboard because it's different and fun, but the subconscious learning curve makes it a little less practical than other laptops for the work that I do every single day. And that's because, and this shouldn't come as much of a surprise, this laptop does really well with my workflow. The panel is still good, and even if it is 1080p, it's still good for editing in a 4K timeline, and then render times are just great. With all of these computing products that I've been uh, checking out recently, I'm experiencing the joy of rendering like a 12 minute 4K video like this one in like four minutes flat. It's awesome. But as an on the go workhorse, I kind of struggle with the two sides of me, the gamer versus the creator. Do I want this laptop because there's so many things about it that are just so damn cool? Or do I need to look at something a little bit more practical? Now, we're not traveling a lot, but I am going in and out of my office, which means lugging it and its humongous power brick around. The display is admittedly another point of contention. Like I said, it's good, but a high refresh rate doesn't necessarily benefit or add to my video editing. Something with higher resolution would be more appreciated. And the keyboard is the right kind of different, but I just outlined why different might not be ideal for all the writing I do. If you want a great gaming laptop that was literally engineered by Intel and brings some unique features for what is now a pretty good price, Main Gear have done a bang up job with the Element 3. The question is how much of a not gamer are you? Because there are some features here that can certainly help people like creatives, but you have to remember that the first objective of this laptop is great gaming, and Main Gear have done a great job of providing all of the elements just for that.
And so there you go, the laptop reviews continue here on my channel and I'm super happy about that. Thank you again to Main Gear for letting me try this thing out for quite some time. I know that this laptop is a little bit dated, but uh, especially now as specifications are getting really awesome, things from 2019 will do really well with gaming in 2020 still. So it's a great time to just check those laptops out and I think this is a wonderful one in the bunch. If you're into gaming and laptops and gaming laptop reviews, hit that like button and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already to keep up with all of the content that I'm doing here on my channel. It's obviously a very busy time in smartphones, but I will do my best to get into these other categories so that we have some extra forms of tech to enjoy. And with all of that, we're going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and each other, everybody, and enjoy your tea, everybody.